awkward this ends up being. Um, I had very bootleg tripod set up and this setup is probably terrible. The camera quality is terrible, audio quality is terrible, lighting is terrible. But let's go. This is an update. Uh, I'm Vincent Faust. This is an update to my X-Men collection and uh, some unboxing and shit like that. So just a few books since I made the giant video last time that add on to the X-Men stuff. Um, here's the stack and then we'll go through them one by one. Here's uh, Wolverine by Jason Aaron volume three. There are four of these total. This, right now this is the only one I have. Um, uh, he did a pretty good run and then this basically continues on in many ways into Wolverine and the X-Men. And then we have X-Men The Trial of Gambit, which this marks the end of the Scott Lobdell era of X-Men. Um, this collects Uncanny 341 to 350 um, with some Joe Mad art. And both of those were bought in a lot because um, recently, I don't know, because of overstocked uh, warehouses and things like that, you'll, you'll if you're you know, you know where to look as a collector, you'll find a lot of retailers and online and even some stores like Books A Million that sell a lot of thick paperbacks, like epic collections, complete collections, things like that. And even some of the Marvel's recent oversized hardcovers, they'll sell them at a pretty discounted rate um, with remainder marks and everything like that. So those were in that kind of set, um, and I'm happy to have those. And then this is a recent pickup from my local store in their sales bin. This is Road to Onslaught Volume 1. There are three of these total. If you check my other video, video you will know that I have Volume 2. So I just need the third one. And I think um, with that and the, the other books I'm about to show you, that I think that will be the end of all of the currently collected Scott Lobdell era um, X-Men. That 90s era post Claremont. And before you had a series of different teams and then eventually whatever um, and then following up on that here is Avengers X-Men Blood Ties which is a crossover um, from the 90s this only includes one issue of X-Men Agis plus X-Men one issue of Uncanny X-Men and an annual but this is a crossover um, and this is Bob Harris is writing the Avengers at this point so this is very 90s um, and there's a Black Knight one-shot in here, I believe. And this is from, I think, 1996 is when this crossover happened. So there's a, a little tiny ga gap in the X-Men, um, pretty much just for the complete completest. Um, and most of this era of Avengers has not been collected to date. And then here is X-Force Blood Ties from your hardcover. And this was also briefly mentioned in my other video where I discussed that um, this is this was the only premier hardcover that I was missing in my set for the Fabian Nicieza run on X-Force. Um, so the second part of the video, which is uh, the hype part, so hit the boring, uh, put the boring part up first. So here's a big box. It's kind of unnecessarily large. And we're gonna open it. It's unboxing time. Um, gotta have a Decent knife, handy, opening packages. Um, not much to say here um, while I open the box. Oh joy, it's filled with packing peanuts. That's fun. Not, um, very, you know, environmentally friendly and uh, pain in the ass. Okay, let's get this out without getting peanuts everywhere. That's not going to happen. Oh God. They're everywhere. Alright, now, put that aside. Try and get most of these peanuts back in the box. Put this box aside. Clear the table. Um, and now we're left with a giant thing of plastic. So let's get into this. Uh, camera angle probably not the most 
flattering for myself or the package. Um, too bad. One big thick layer of plastic removed. Another layer comes off. Um, and another one. Uh, I imagine the excitement is palpable as a as a audience member watching this video. I'm sure there are many of you as well. And another layer. I think I'm, I'm grateful, but this person went a little overkill. Um, also, while I'm still opening this, this package, there was a little bit of a USPS uh, delivery scare while in the process of getting it um, but thankfully it was just their weird and competent status update system and the final layer of plastic is off the knife side and back first front front then this is the X-Men Inferno hardcover which is the final hardcover that I needed to complete my oversized Chris Claremont X-Men collection. And it looks to be in pretty great shape. No problems with it on my side. Um. A little update with shaky cam. Uh, earlier in the video, if you notice me like slightly uneasy in my voice, that's because I was noticing uh, this, which is that the dust jacket actually has a uh, tear right through the middle, but just on the front. Um, I went back, and this is actually listed in the eBay listing. Um, apparently, I'm just blind. Uh, but it explains just how crazy people are about this book and how rare it is that it still got up when I was auction, when I won the auction, it was still pretty darn high, even considering this major uh, issue. But um, I'm of two minds on it. For one, I don't really, I'm not huge on the condition of my books, um, especially something like a dust jacket. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the book is there for me to read it. And uh, I just, I mean, I, on the other hand, yes, I did go out of my way to pay overly a ridiculous amount for this book but that's to complete my crazy set um, that and I've been hunting at this for years um, but regardless um, and then on the shelf all that's going to be seen is the spine which is totally fine on this book um, and I'm not I don't care about maybe a little bit of denting on the on the edges that's not, not a problem for me at all and when I actually read the books I take the dust jacket off um, so this really doesn't concern me much, but what I will do is I will see if I can find a, the file for this dust jacket, and then if I would like to, I can always go and uh, get a print shop to print a replacement dust jacket, and then I, it'll be fine. Um, it won't be quite... I don't, I've actually never had experience with printing dust jackets. I actually have to do that anyways for another book um, soon, and I have other plans on that front as well. Um, so I'll see how it compares to Marvel's official dust jackets. Um, but again, I'm not, a, I'm not real anal about that stuff. So it's pretty crazy, and uh, my dumbass didn't expect it. But it, I'm not going uh, crazy about this. And you can see there that now Inferno is right where it belongs. And I have all of Chris Claremont's Uncanny X-Men run 
at least what is in hardcover uh, as of August 2017. Um, and there's a little bit of room to spare, but not really enough, so I'm not sure what I'll do with Classic X-Men and the um, eventual fourth, possibly fifth, Uncanny X-Men volume. Actually, while I'm at it, I'll do another unboxing just to make this video needlessly long and uninteresting. But we're sticking with the shaky cam, so that'll make this awkward. Um, so let's go. Here, this is a significantly smaller box compared to the giant thing that I opened for Inferno. Uh, so this is a much more efficient kind of packaging, and we'll see whether the books are fine with that. Um, so you can see right there, it says Hulk, and I'm sure that's the weight, um, 4.8 pounds. Um, inside, see some decent, you know, the dumb plastic packaging. Let me move this slip out of the way. One more, even more bubble wrap, and this looks to be encasing the books. And empty box below, of course. Move that out of the way. And now, let's try and uh, get this off with mostly one Whoa. hand. Whoa. Yeah, that camera work is gonna be a nightmare. And here's, now it's wrapped in some kind of paper, backing paper. Here we go. This paper out of the way. And here we go. Uh, the book's underneath. And of course, this lighting is bad. And are these in the right order? No, they're not, of course. There we go. So now, in the right order, we have the three trades of Bill Mantlo's Hulk run with Sal Buscema um, and this, these collect all together from Incredible Hulk 269 through 313 so this is a huge chunk and uh, let me put them on top of each other and they also this doesn't even collect uh, Mantlo's whole run put them on top of each other um, and the crazy part is this doesn't even collect Mantlo's full run. Um, his run starts at about 245, I think. So there could be about one, maybe two more of this size to collect the full run. And Mantlo is really a... Uh, the uh, He left the first mark as far as making Hulk a more intellectual and interesting book rather than just a monster of the week kind of rampage thing which is what it was for most of the 70s um, and then Mantlo and John Byrne switched off books Byrne came into Hulk and Mantlo went on to Alpha Flight and Byrne was only on Hulk for like six issues and then ditched over creative differences and Mantlo had a, a somewhat respectable run on Alpha Flight but sadly this Hulk run which far surp uh, surpassed um, Burns, was cut short due to that exchange. And then following Burn, you had some iffy, a little bit of an iffy era, and then um, Peter David starts his ridiculously long run where the Hulk really becomes a very cerebral book. Um, so these are, this is great, these are great books if you're interested in, in the Hulk and the more... Um, I don't know, kind of story and character driven version of Hulk rather than an action blockbuster. And um, I was lucky to get all of these in a in a set in a, and pretty affordable um, online because I believe one or two of these can be somewhat tricky to find. And particularly, I mean, they are thick books as I showed. So the cover price on these, even just the cover price ranges from I think 35 to $40. Um, so if you can get a deal on these, definitely check it out, if only just to flip them. And um, part of that deal is you can you can see my camera quality is terrible, but you can see a little bit. There's a little bit of um, 
kind of warping on the spines just some of the some of the plastic sheen is coming off but that's just it's just appearance doesn't matter to me at all um, and so with that is the finally the end of this video and uh, if you somehow got through this congrats you get a no prize